Number 11. The Handbook of Chemistry and Physics gives solubilities of the following compounds in grams per 100 milliliters of water. Because these compounds are only slightly soluble, assume that the volume does not change on dissolution and calculate the solubility product for each. And then we have this example. So we have barium bromate uh, hydrate, which is BABRO32H2O. And the solubility that they give us is 0.3 grams in 100 mils of water. Now, a lot of wording up here for basically one thing. They just told us to calculate the solubility product of this compound. Now, the solubility product is a KSP. The SP is solubility product. So all we're doing is we're finding a KSP. And remember, a KSP always comes from a balanced equation. So we have to write a balanced equation for the dissolution, aka the dissolving, dissolution dissolving tomato tomato, um, of this compound. However, I don't like to work with hydrates. They're too hard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my mole ratio to figure out what the ionic compound is right, in the hydrate. And this is going to come into play when we're actually doing the math. But out of this whole hydrate, if I had one whole hydrate, I have one BABRO32. And I have one H2O. But more importantly, I only carry about, I only carry, <laughs> I only care about the ionic compound because that's what's going to dissolve into the ions. The hydrate is just the water, you know, the, the solvent. So we don't worry about this. We only care about this component. So I'm only going to write my balanced equation based off of the barium bromate. So BA, BR, O3, 2. Now this is slightly soluble. It did say slightly soluble. That means that at equilibrium, so double arrow, you're only going to have a a small amount of this compound dissolving into its two ions. So if it's dissolving, it's first going to act as a solid, and then the solid dissolves. But now the question is, what are these two ions? Well, this goes back to Gen Chem 1, where we can look at a compound and know what the two ions are, right? When we made our ionic compounds all the way in, like, chapter, what, 2 or something? Remember, polyatomic stay together, so the break has to be between the barium and the bromate, BrO3. And then, maybe I'll do that first. So we have Ba plus BrO3. Now we just need those ions in the upper right-hand corner because they're going to be dissolving. They need charges. But just use your subscripts. There is one barium and two bromates. This one crisscrossed up, telling me that the bromate was a negative one charge. This two crisscrosses up, telling me that the barium was a plus two. So there's your two charges. Barium is a plus two. I mean, it's in group two, so plus two. Bromate's always a negative one. So you could put negative one, negative, that's fine with me. Uh, they're charges, so they're going to be aqueous. And now we just have to make sure that it's balanced. Well, there's one barium, so one barium. But there's two bromates. So I have to come over here and I have to say that I have two bromates, or BRO3s. Now the balanced equation is done. So let's put that off to the side for now. What we're going to do now is we're going to write the general equation of the KSP. Remember, the general equation for a KSP is this, right? It's just the concentration of the products raised to the coefficients. No reactants, because in a KSP, they're always going to be solids. No solids allowed. So KSP equals the concentration of the Ba2 plus and the BrO3 minus. So Ba2 plus times the BrO3 minus. And now just be careful with KSP. You really got to check for those coefficients. There was no coefficient in front of the barium. That means that there is one of them. So you can put a one here, but you don't have to. But the bromate, there was two. 
So I have to raise this to the second power. The, whatever the bromate concentration is, it has to be raised to the two because that's the coefficient. But now, do I know what the barium concentration is and do I know what the bromate concentration is? Not at the moment. But that's where we're now going to be using this value here. That's the only number they gave us. Remember, molarity is always mole divided by liter. But they gave me grams and milliliters. So I just have to use my handy dandy conversions to go from grams to moles and milliliters to liters. We love a good conversion question. I know, I know, not really, but we gotta do it. Now, since we're starting off with grams, we do need to include the whole hydrate when we do this conversion. So just keep that in mind. But then once we find the molarity value, then we're going to just convert it into just the compound, the BABRO32. So let's start it off. So we have 0 0.30 grams of the BABRO32 and then the hydrate, I have to include that, H2O. And this is all over the uh, 100 mils, right? So 100 milliliters. So now just work with one unit at a time. Let's first convert the grams into uh, moles. So we're gonna times by a ratio. We're gonna throw the unit that we don't want on the other side, so grams of the BA, B, ro 32hto that goes on the bottom, and then moles of the BA, BRO32.H2O go on the top. This is the uh, periodic table. One mole always equals whatever the mass is on the periodic table, and I'm just going to get that out. So uh, periodic table's out, calc's out, let's go. So BA, 137.3 plus two bromines, so two times 79.9, plus six oxygens the first time around, so six times 16. And then I have two hydrogens, so that, times two, and then I have one more oxygen, so plus 16. So that's 400, 400, and 11.116 grams, cancel out with grams, and we have one of the units, we have mole. Now let's just convert milliliters into the liters, right, that we need for molarity. So just times again, times by the ratio. In this case, we're going to put milliliters on the top because we want to cancel them. Liters go on the bottom. A thousand milliliters for every one liter. Milliliters will cancel, and now we're left with liters. Okay. And now let's see what we got. So 0.3 divided by 100 divided by 411.116 times 1,000. I get 7.297. That's good enough for me. 7.297 times 10 to the negative third, and that's moles per liter of, remember, the whole hydrate but I only want to use it for just the ionic compound. But remember, use your mole ratio. If you have one whole hydrate, you have one of the BABRO32, right? There is no number in the front saying that I had two or three of them. So always, the amount of the hydrate you have is always gonna equal uh, what your ionic compound is. So I can just say that I'm starting with 7.297 times 10, to the negative third molarity. But now how do I go from this molarity to the molarity of the individual ions? Well, that's when we use your mole ratios in the balanced equation. There was one of these, maybe I'll put that in red. There was one of your initial solid, one barium, two plus, and two bromates. So since the first ratio is a one to one, it's the same number, that means that whatever you started with would be the same number. So the barium 2 plus would be 7.297 times 10 to the negative third molarity. And then since the second relationship is a 1 to 2, whatever this is 
this would have to be two times the amount. So I'll say two times the 7.297 times 10 to the negative 3. And now let's figure out what that number is. So 2 times 7.297 times 10 to the negative 3. I get 0 0.014594 molarity. Cool. And now these are your two molarities that are going into the KSP equation. So the first one, nothing has to be raised, but the second one has to be squared. So the BA is 7.297 times 10 to the negative 3. And then the second one is that 0.014594. That one's squared. I'm just going to plug it into my calculator. I'm going to get the KSP. So that's squared times 7.297 times 10 to the negative 3. Uh, two sig figs. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 6. I think that looks good. And that's it. KSP, no units. So it's just 1.6 times 10 to the negative 6. And there you go. I really hope this, this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. And check out the channel. We also have physics and math videos out at the moment with much more subjects coming your way in the, in the near future. So hang tight, all right? Thank you so much for your support. And I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye-bye.